three, two, one. Welcome, everybody, to the Ring Generals podcast. Wherever the heck you're listening to, we appreciate you so much for listening. I am the RKJ Man, joined here by Easy E, Eric Santos. What's cooking? And my homie Nick Nenad, hypocritical Nick, will be here very, very soon. He had to deal with what I had to deal with today, a hell of a lot of traffic in the area. I did text them earlier. I did tell them that, yeah, man, uh, it should clear up around, uh, I don't want to give out specific uh, street names, but uh, I told him to, uh, yeah, just it should clear up by that time. So hopefully it should clear up. I Hopefully he's in that area. That's hey, for man, sure. if for all y'all who want to come out here when WrestleMania comes out here in a couple of years, because there's uh, the L.A. Rams and the Chargers are building a new stadium. So WrestleMania That's is right. going to be out here soon or it's going to be in Vegas. Uh Y'all better be ready for this traffic, okay? Yeah. If you are, if you think you can just get from place to place easily, kind of like New York maybe with the train station, is the tra- public transportation out here ain't very good. So y'all better have a car. Y'all better be ready to go. Y'all better have your lifts ready. Y'all better be in walking distance. Figure something out, man. I mean, I know they haven't announced a WrestleMania for here for a while. Next year it's going to be in Tampa Bay. I heard it's going to be closer in venues. But good Lord, man, if you think it's bad down here in, or- in Orange County area, man, in LA, if you have a big event like a WrestleMania or a Super Bowl or an Olympics, oh my goodness. It's going to get packed. And I know my uncle, who's a truck driver, he goes from state to state and he tells me that places like Oregon and Washington, traffic is not, <laughs> it's no problem. It's yeah. like no worries. Uh, he goes to like Florida. He goes sometimes to North Carolina to do some deliveries. And uh, yeah, he says that, yeah. Traffic is, like, no problem at all. Well, that's good for them out there. But uh, I know one thing. We are on the road to WrestleMania. No more pay-per-views? No No more more, pay-per-views. No more. (laughs) You could check out our podcast last week, Filler Lane. And you could also check out me and Eric. We did uh, a Skype which is our first time doing Skype on the Ring Journals podcast right. where we automatically reviewed the Fast Lane, or as I like to call it, the Filler Lane pay-per-view, uh, where we talked a little bit about what's going on. Eric, real quickly, kind of to wrap a bull tie on this part, obviously Nick wants to give his thoughts, and we'll have him give his thoughts when no, he, he gets will, in, yeah. but do you have any final thoughts going into uh, after Fast Lane, going on to the road to WrestleMania that you didn't talk about in the video? Um, I think I just said enough in that Skype video that we did, uh, you and me. Um, I think that, like I said, filler, uh, Fastlane is nothing more than just a pay-per-view that had some tweaks and some adjustments to certain storylines. Or if the champion has nothing else to do on that night, they just put him in a six-man tag or like uh, a feud that has to be settled once and for all You know, before they hit to uh, WrestleMania. You know, it, it, these things kind of happen. Um, I understand if you want to do it like one pay per view, it's it's all it's all good and it's all good and fun. But two pay per views before WrestleMania, it's just it's just too much. Yeah, I I don't understand why we do two pay per views. I'm just well, I know why they do it for financial reasons. They make a lot more money doing two pay per views on the road to WrestleMania than one. But WrestleMania just garners you so much yeah. money right there that that just makes up for it. You know, but I mean. Fastlane is there to have that one final one final card that kind of solidifies everything on the road to WrestleMania. And it looks like things are getting solidified right now. So, Eric, what do you think right now about the road to WrestleMania for the guy who I call the Black Seth Rollins, Kofi Kingston, right now? So we had him come out. Okay, and him and the New Day come out and argued with Vince McMahon about how he's been there for 11 years and how he needs to, he deserves just an opportunity to get a shot at the WWE Championship. And and he's willing to do whatever. But one thing that struck me when he was talking, when he said, people like me not being near the WWE Championship, somewhere along those lines. So we talked a little bit about it in the Fast Lane pay per view review. I think they can use the race card in this if they're smart and if they're really cunning and they're intelligent, they can use it. And it seems like they're it seems like slowly but surely it's creeping into the storyline, but we don't want to necessarily say it just yet. But when he dropped that line, I thought, hmm, the race card might get played in this feud. What do you think about this feud going into WrestleMania? Do you think Kofi Kingston is going to overcome the odds with this gauntlet match? And go to WrestleMania to face Dana Bryan, the champion. And where does that leave us storyline-wise moving forward? First of all, that gunland match is unfair. <laughs> it's BS. Yeah, it's, it's BS. It's, it's the definition of it's bullshit. Just, it's just Vince McMahon. Uh, although I do like the fact that Kofi Kingston never complained about 
anything that they put in front of him. Uh, you know, spending a, a way, you know, spending time away from his kids and all that. Um, it's unfair, but then at the same time, I get it. Uh, Vince McMahon, slowly but surely, in a way, he's uh, trying to grab the attention, you know, for us to uh, lean towards Kofi. You know, it looks like they're putting trust into Kofi Kingston. Um, I think Kofi Kingston, he he will overcome it. I think so. He will overcome it unless Vince McMahon gets himself involved. Now, the question I have for you is this. Okay, do you think by them booking this gauntlet match, do you think it's kind of ruining the storyline? Because we kind of know that Kofi will probably overcome these odds and face Daniel mm-hmm. Bryan for the championship at Mania. Do you think, because when, when I'm hearing, people are saying, well, this is so predictable. They're making Kofi look like a superhero mm-hmm. now. I personally didn't mind it because the more odds you stack up against them, mm-hmm the better it is when he overcomes those odds. Kind of like the Daniel Bryan storyline leading up to WrestleMania when he had to face Triple H, and then he got attacked by Triple H, and then he had to beat Randy Orton and Batista in that triple threat to win the WWE World Heavyweight Championship at the time, which was a phenomenal match and a phenomenal WrestleMania. But I personally don't have an issue with that, Eric. Like, what do you think about that? Because for me personally, the more obstacles you put in front of Kofi, the more he overcomes, the more the crowd the more the crowd supports him and gets behind this guy. And it just seems like that is the way it's going because what they did to him at Fastlane was, it was messed up. It was unfair. Yeah. I mean, if you look at the participants in that Godland match, Samoa Joe, Randy Orton, Rowan. Uh, well, Eric, yes, Eric Rowan. That's actually a good addition because it makes it seem, because he's with Daniel Bryan. So that just shows that it may be Eric Rowan. Rowan might be the last person that he's going to go up the, against. The bar. Yeah, the bar. So if they stack this in order, like Kofi Kingston goes through the bar first and then Randy Orton and then Samoa Joe and then at last Eric Rowan and then they might tie something with Daniel Bryan. That just shows that it might they might continue the storyline with Daniel Bryan and Kofi Kingston. Now, another thing that Daniel Bryan has said about Kofi Kingston, he said that he's a B plus player in which Stephanie McMahon I, also labeled. I, I caught that. He labeled Daniel Bryan that. a couple of years ago. <laughs> a B-plus player. That, that you know, mm. I like when the WWE draws upon past storylines for things like this. A B-plus player. How ironic that now Daniel Bryan, That's the right. guy who was called the B-plus player, <laughs> is now calling another person as a heel the B-plus plus player. This is one of those times where I give the WWE credit. I criticize the WWE. Nick is, calls himself the WWE apologist, and he says how I always complain, and I'm always the bad, I always look at the WWE as the bad guys. And don't get me wrong, they do a lot of bad, bad stuff. They get a lot of things Well, they've gone away with it. But... Well, when you're a multi-billion dollar company, you can get away with stuff, man. It's kind of like what Trump does and stuff like that. You get away with stuff when you got money. Like those kids? Like those kids the, going to Nazis, college. Yeah. Uh, oh, the, oh, kids this, yeah, the, yeah. the kids get into college yeah. right now. Oh, yeah. Uh, but that. you can get away with it when you got money, okay? But the WWE is in the right with this one, building up a slow, slow burn for Kofi. Now, there's two things that could happen. Kofi can win next week and overcome the odds, and everybody can be like, all right, well, we got what we predicted. Or Kofi could possibly get screwed, and we could still have some type of triple threat going into WrestleMania. I think the right way, Eric, is for Kofi to just overcome the odds and face Daniel Bryan. Now, do you think, I'm going to ask you this question again, do you think it'll be bigger if Kofi wins the title as the first full black African-American champion or if Kofi competes against Daniel Bryan and comes up just short, but the New Day turns on him at WrestleMania? Oh. Which one is the better option? Which one is the better scenario for Kofi in his career? I think the best scenario for him to win the title. I think so. Although it's interesting if the New Day were to turn on them, on, on him, but I think... If the New Day were to turn on Kofi Kingston, it would have to be a little bit later. I wouldn't I wouldn't see it at WrestleMania. I don't think so. Daniel Bryan, he's held the title since what? Uh, he's held the title since uh, five days before Survivor Series, so okay. November. Okay, so that's enough time for Daniel Bryan to, okay, maybe I think it's time for, you know, Kofi Kingston to, you know, here here's the belt. Like, this is the belt that Kofi Kingston, I know he deserves it, so... I'm willing it to pass it to Kofi Kingston. Um, but yes, I think Kofi Kingston should win at WrestleMania. 
and have the new day turn on them a little bit later. Or Kofi Kingston ha- goes under, you know, turns into an eagle maniac with the belt, and he uh, turns on the new day. Well, because that's what champions do. Champions they have the belt, and then all of a sudden they become an eagle maniac, and then they even turn on their own guys. I don't know about <laughs> becoming an eagle maniac because Kofi just seems like one of those dudes who can't really put off a heel vibe because he's such a likable dude like he has so many likable characteristics and qualities and traits that make him likable that's why when the new day were briefly heels they just got over with the crowd you know what i'm saying they just got over their act got over very quickly with the crowd Mm -hmm. even as heels so i don't know about that but what i can see happening is big e getting jealous of Kofi getting his opportunity and saying, hey, I've been in the WWE for some years too. Where's my opportunity? Where's my title shot? And him turning on him or Vince McMahon offering something. What I would have liked to see personally in this whole Kofi Gauntlet situation one day is for Big E or Xavier Woods to get placed in an opportunity too, like this Gauntlet, where Vince McMahon says, okay, you can go through, but you've got to beat one of your New Day members, one of your New Day brothers in order to get yeah. To the title shot. It's interesting that you mentioned that because remember when Mr. McMahon said that, and one day, Kofi, you're going to be in the Hall of Fame, um, but you're not going to be in the a Hall of Fame solo. You're going to be in the Hall of Fame along with the New Day. Yeah. That's I, pretty I thought, interesting. I, well, anybody can get into the Hall of Fame now these days. Oh, yeah. I mean, we got Tori Wilson in there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, you know, Junkyard so, Dog. You know, all these dudes are in there. Anybody and their mom can get in the WWE Hall of Fame as hypocritical Nick is walking in the studio walking right in, now. And which right now I should be powering up the microphone. So, boom, there it is. Power it's fired up. Power up that microphone. And Don't walk on my phone, Nick. It's all good. Did I step on your phone? No. Okay, came good, close, good. though. I got Tri- nervous. Thank goodness. You got to tell me that next time. You did get my text we're about live right the... Now. Uh, yeah, we're, we're live right we're now. We're definitely live. We're live. We so, are 12 minutes in already. So, oh, hypocritical yeah, Nick, so we were talking a little bit about the Kofi Kingston storyline right now. All right. We were talking yes. about Kofi's road, excuse me, not Kofi, Black Seth Rollins' road to WrestleMania right now. Good correction. Okay. Good correction. Um, what do you think about his road? And did you see our video? Did you see the video of me and Eric? I, I did not. Okay. I, literally, I literally just watched SmackDown uh, like this morning. Okay. So, so yeah. I talked a little bit about how if they wanted to, they could possibly pull out the race card for this and do it in a smart way. Kind of like Booker T, WrestleMania 19. Because you did hear Kofi Kingston say, yeah. people like me. I was thinking the same thing. And then yeah. I commented it on yeah. somebody's video, and he was like, yeah, you could do that. So what do you think about this storyline with Black Seth Rollins? Well, it, it, it surely is an interesting one, and it's taken a turn that I didn't expect, and that is that I don't think Kofi's going to get a WWE Championship match at WrestleMania because... He's not beating those five guys uh, next week on SmackDown. He's got to face what? Randy Orton, Samoa, Samoa Joe, Joe, The Bar, Bar and Rowan. Eric Rowan. Yeah. And Eric Rowan? It's not Daniel Bryan? No, no it's Eric Rowan. Rowan. He's sending okay, okay, his, Rowan. his insurance policy. So, I mean, it doesn't matter. I mean, Daniel Bryan would have been the nail in the coffin, but uh, he's not beating those five guys. I mean, unless he gets help or something like that uh, from his New Day partners, I don't oh. think he's going to WrestleMania. Like, I, I, it's it, it's strange. It's actually an intriguing storyline to me because I don't know what's going to happen. Like, who the WWE Championship match is this going to be what? Like, Kevin Owens versus Dan? I, I don't know. I hope not. I don't think so. I no, I don't think it happening. is either. I mean, we saw this kind of with John Cena and The Undertaker last year where you didn't know if there actually was going to be a match. And there was that, that uh, sense that it actually might not happen. At least for me, that's what I think. I don't think Kobe's not beaten five studs next week. There's no way. I think he finds a way to beat them, but he has to have some help. Yeah. This has yeah, to be a situation be where there, there has to be the New Day helping him. Something has to happen where Kofi finds a way to win. But, I mean, if you do this race storyline, he's got to win the title at WrestleMania. Oh, you know, I, I agree. I think I think if he gets to a WrestleMania and has a WWE Championship match, he's winning. Mm-hmm. Because he's already pinned Daniel Bryan like three times already, too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Or, or twice, twice. He's but pinned him twice. That's but... good enough. And once legitimately, too, just in the gauntlet match. Yeah, it, it's 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 an intriguing and strange storyline at the same time because we don't know where the WWE is headed with this. If you book Kofi Kingston to beat all these guys, it's going to seem a little unbelievable. It's going to be, it's it's, be fake. It's yeah. going to be fake. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. I don't but see that's why you got to have the man have some help. Yeah, He's got to have some help. He's got to have some screwy finish or something. AJ Styles. 
he's got to cost Randy Orton the gauntlet match first, right? Yeah, that's, because, that's probably a good point. All right, all right, but something's got to happen, and it's making me excited for WrestleMania. So how is our collective excitement for WrestleMania taking out the fact that we're obviously going to WrestleMania? How's everybody feeling going into WrestleMania? Are we getting more excited now that the storylines are starting to come into place? Well, yeah, I mean, I think there's overall excitement in general, at least on my part, just because we know that the next pay-per-view is WrestleMania, regardless as if I was going or not. It's getting a lot more sunny it's getting a lot more warm, and that means it's WrestleMania time. Okay, mm -hmm. so it, I, I'm feeling good about it. I am extra excited that I get to see, for example, Kurt Angle's last match in WWE live. Uh, I am excited. Against John Cena, possibly. Yeah, I am excited could, that yeah. I get to see Batista versus Triple H in a No Holds Barred They're match. giving us what we want. Yeah, so, it, it, <laughs> yeah, so it's like, I didn't expect it to be No Holds Barred, so that was a, that was a little intriguing. I was intriguing thinking he was going to announce Hell in a Cell, and I was like, good lord, please don't but announce Hell in a Cell. But you can't put a movie star uh, in I was like, no, please don't yeah. put a Hell in a Cell, well, they, man. Well, they fought Hell in a Cell before, so... I mean, no, it's bar. Yeah, it makes sense. We'll, we'll get on that. We'll get. I, I want to focus on the Kofi thing, but uh, so I am excited, but I still I don't like Becky, Charlotte, and Ronda. That's a very interesting match because I you don't know what it's going to happen because I feel like Ronda, if she just goes rogue and goes legitimate, there's no way she loses. And if Becky Lynch puts her in an arm bar, since she said that the arm bar isn't legitimate and it's not real, then it's like. Well, what What's they gotta happen what there? they gotta do is they gotta set they gotta put a lot more steam into the storyline going into WrestleMania. You don't like, think there's been enough steam on it already? I mean, I they've been talking shit on each other. Like they have been, yeah. but yeah. I need Social to see media, more yeah. from Becky Lynch. I need to see her just go completely ape shit on Ronda Rousey and Charlotte Flair, more than just hitting them with the damn uh, crutch. I need to see her completely lose her mind and for there to be all out brawl. Well, and I need to crutch. see blood. I need to see everything. And it's time for this crutch thing to go away. Yeah, well, I've the crutch. I've called for this for a up. month now. I think she put it away last night. Yeah, yeah, I, it's, it's I think time it's to done. get it's, it's It's over. It's done. It's dead and gone. Let's get to the road to WrestleMania. But I, I think, you know, because there, there's talk right now. Apparently, I'm hearing that Vincent Man doesn't know what the main event is going to be, right? He I don't know what it is either. He doesn't know what the... Is, is it going to be the women's triple threat match for Raw? Or is it going to be the Kofi Kingston-Daniel Bryan match if Kofi makes it to WrestleMania? Is it going to be Seth Rollins versus Brock Lesnar? So let's, let's, let's talk a little bit about this. Brock Lesnar, Seth Rollins. Do we think Seth Rollins has a chance to win this matchup? And... Do you think Roman Reigns is some way, somehow going to get involved to even give Seth the title? Are you guys even interested in this matchup? Eric, what's your thoughts on this? Uh, Seth Rollins, I do think that he's going to come out. I do think he's going to come out on top. Uh, and I think I did talk to you, uh, Ryan, about it on the uh, filler lane, or should I say the fast lane uh, review. Uh, maybe Vince McMahon might be putting in Roman Reigns, you know, try to slither him in there and try to put them in a triple threat match in which we are pretty much tired of seeing triple threat matches you know, taking place at WrestleMania. I just think that, you know, if that were to happen, it just would lose, to me, credibility between Seth Rollins and Brock Lesnar because that feud has already been established. It's already been building up, and I don't see Roman Reigns in the picture. No, you would kill it. I oh, think what, I don't think Roman. I, I disagree I think with he's you. I don't think Drew Roman McIntyre. Exactly. Yeah. The, the, okay. That's, that would be great. That would be fine. No, I'll I take I, that. I, <laughs> which is fine I, with me. From what they, how they booked Fastlane. And I, again, I, I don't know exactly what you guys talked about on the, on that show, but I, at least what I thought was how they booked Fastlane was that the Shield is done. That that that, that they I don't think are going to be obviously Dean Ambrose went out there and, and and had the match with Drew McIntyre to end Raw, and and he lost. But I, I don't think Roman Reigns takes away Rollins' credibility by helping him in a match because nobody's going to be helping Brock Lesnar. So why would a why would the face have a guy help him win? The t that just takes away credibility from Seth Rollins. I think what they're doing with this storyline is, and this is what uh, Paul Heyman said and Seth Rollins said on Raw, is that Seth Rollins he believes he's better than Finn Balor, Daniel Bryan, and AJ Styles, and that Brock Lesnar struggled against those guys, so that he thinks he's better, so that he has a chance to win. I absolutely think he has a chance to win, and the fact. That, um, you know, Brock, we've heard these rumors about UFC. And the fact at, he's not advertised for SummerSlam. Yeah, well, I, yeah, but he hasn't been advertised this stuff before and then has showed up. I mean, that's not—I I don't always look into that because 
that could just be... They Rousey's just, also not advertised for SummerSlam, it, Yeah, too. exactly. It, it, and so I think they might be rego- renegotiating a new deal, so of course they're not going to be, you know, you know what I'm saying? But, but like Brock Lesnar says, he does what he wants to do. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so you don't, you don't know... I don't really I mean, know. May, maybe Brock wins because of that reason, but I just think because of these, these non-kayfabe rumors of uh, Brock going back to the UFC, people wanting to fight him in the UFC... I just don't see him keeping the title, especially since Seth Rollins is, at least in my mind, a credible enough uh, person to beat him and one of the most credible people to actually beat him in the company. Yeah, I, I think... Who else is going to beat him, it, right? It, if Seth doesn't. It Roman, would have I guess? to be Roman, Roman. again, but, but nobody, I, I think the crowd is going to turn on him the moment that happens again. So, I mean, right now, if they want to keep Roman cheered, the best bet is to have Roman have some vulnerability, which is what they're doing. Yeah. Um, so, I, I guess... The main part now is to have Seth Rollins go in there and find a way to win. Um, but somebody mentioned this, and it's a great point. How many more happy endings can you have at WrestleMania? Yeah, I was thinking about that, Becky too. Becky yeah. winning. Seth Rollins winning. Daniel, I mean, excuse me, Kofi winning. That's three happy endings. And Triple H winning. That's four, actually. The Miz. The Miz. That's five. Yeah. Somebody's going to get, mm-hmm. somebody's going to win. So One of these heels have got to emerge. I think the most likely one will probably be Randy Orton. Randy Orton. Yeah. Randy Orton. I think uh, whoever faces Kurt Angle probably wins because it will be John Cena. You think it'll be John Cena? It'll well, be John whoever Cena. wins between good ass match between Kurt Angle and, and potentially Cena. Fifteen years ago. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, good enough. I, what I'm saying is that's I I, I couldn't think of who was going to face Kurt Angle. And I was hoping be. I was hoping it wouldn't be anybody. Kind of BS and John Cena is not BS. John oh. Cena, that's the only feud that you can do and match you can only I'll do. John Cena doesn't him. need to be there every week. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. He can only show up like one, maybe the Raw before Mania, make the match, or he can just show up at Mania, just like yeah. Undertaker did last sure. year. Yeah. Uh, let me ask you guys a question about this. So Finn Balor lost the Intercontinental Championship this past Monday night against Bobby Lashley and Raw, and I've been calling for this and i've been saying he needs to be the demon at this year's wrestlemania and he needs to face the undertaker even if it's for 10 minutes you've got to establish finn balor as a star and you've got to get over that demon character and the only way you can do it is if undertaker in a way passes the torch over to finn balor do you think we're going to see the demon first of all at wrestlemania and do you think finn balor is on the road to wrestlemania to face the undertaker i think so uh, well Demon, yes, I do see Finn Balor coming out as a demon. Undertaker, if that were to happen, great. I don't see anybody else taking on Undertaker as of right now, or I don't even know if Undertaker is even going to show up. But That's a great point. I don't know. But if there's somebody valuable or worth to take on the Undertaker this year, I think it's Finn Balor. Uh, No, I don't think Finn Balor does it because there's no storyline pointing to it right now. Uh, If next week... Something points to it. I'll likely say yes. I, I just don't. I've heard the uncertainty about the Undertaker not being there as well, uh, and I, just based on his recent like stuff he's done with his non kayfabe interviews and him being advertised. It's just for shocking stuff. to see that man in a church, just not as the Undertaker. Yeah, it's, just, it's, it's not Mark the Undertaker. Calloway. It's Mark the Calloway. exact opposite of what you would think he would like. It, it, it's completely yeah. ki- it's completely kayfabe is dead, y'all. Undertaker was the last holdout. He oh. was the last holdout no, on K-Fabe, K-Fabe. Definitely. I mean, you got you got the, the top women star calling out literally the business. Yeah, oh, like in a YouTube video. Fake. So yeah, Undertaker. It's, they're uh, using it as a storyline pu- push now. You know, what I'm saying it's it, it. But I I just I think Finn Balor. I, I don't know what he's gonna do. I just don't. The Undertaker doesn't. He doesn't really. I, I get the passing the torch thing, but nobody's legitimately gonna think that Finn Balor can be the Undertaker of WWE. He's too small. You can't be the Undertaker. You can't be dominant if you're 200 pounds. I wouldn't call in a 300 pound company. I wouldn't call Finn Balor like the next Undertaker at all. Like I would just think as Undertaker as a guy who opened doors for characters like Finn Balor, Aleister Black, Bray Kane, Wyatt, you know Bray Wyatt, yeah, yeah, all yeah. those characters. Undertaker, he's the kind of guy who kind of like laid, like you know, paved the way for those kind of characters to be established. In WWE, you know, or wrestling in general. Anytime I see The Undertaker and anytime I hear about maybe Finn Balor versus Undertaker, I get upset with the Bray Wyatt thing because they could have legitimized Bray Wyatt if they would have had him beat John Cena at WrestleMania 30 and then have The Undertaker find a way to go over Brock Lesnar and but have the street be broken the next year by Bray Wyatt. Uh, they screw Bray Wyatt up. What? Well, I agree with that, but then he ended up cheating on his wife. 
So uh, I cares? think he would have screwed up for himself. Anyway. Everybody cheats on their wives, apparently, that's in the, not, in the, in not... the wrestling industry on balls. <laughs> <laughs> it's a new thing. Haven't you I, heard? I, I don't think Triple H has cheated it's on like his wife yet. It's like a I'm just going to throw that out it's there. It's like a temptation, temptation island. island. I don't watch Tempt- 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 I love Temptation Island. You know what? I'm not going to talk too much crap on Temptation Island because I watched what was the horrendous ending of The Bachelor last weekend. Yeah. Which was just god awful. Temptation okay. Island's much better so, than The Bachelor, man. I agree. It's but at least The Bachelor, there was some sense of like realism I, I to it. I follow a lot of hot chicks on Temptation Island. Yeah. I, on I'm Instagram. not surprised. You follow a lot of hot chicks, period. Yeah, that is true. Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah. That just gives a, a look at the uh, RKJ Man's Instagram. Yeah. You, know, you always want to look at the other side of the Instagram. Yeah, no, you want to look at the other side <laughs> of the Instagram. You're like, what's that guy thinking right now? Oh, he's got 30 chicks uh, in bikinis on the other side. Yeah, uh, like, pretty much. But, okay, so I, I want to get back to, uh, we're fooling around, but, uh, how about Bray Wyatt versus Finn Balor? Do you think there's possibility that there? That happened already, and I would love to see it again, but for me, the Bray Wyatt's So it's Seth Rollins dead. and Brock Lesnar, though. But Bray they're Wyatt, not even mentioning But Bray it. Wyatt's yeah. character's dead. You know, he, he's constantly taking... I haven't heard much He is from the him. eater of pinfalls, as that, wrestle, as that sign no, said. No, Rusev is the... Indiv- did you hear what they said on SmackDown? No, what did they he's say? He's lost 17 consecutive pay-per-view matches. That's pretty that, awful. He is the eater of pinfalls, True. man. I'm, that, that is the... Well, at least Bray Wyatt. Yeah. Bray Wyatt won much. the WWE Championship. Like people, on a pay-per-view. People were pegging Bray Wyatt as the next Undertaker. They were giving him Undertaker a supernatural abilities by showing up That's true. with the Wyatt family and everything like that. And then all of a sudden, they're going to have that man lose at WrestleMania 31 to Taker after he lost again. He's 0-2 at WrestleMania. And now he's just completely dead in the water. There is no way Bray Wyatt can come back as a legitimate as a legitimate contender unless they do some type of character overhaul with him. With Bray Wyatt. I'm sorry. It's just I can't look at Bray Wyatt as a natural contender against Finn Balor and the Demon. He's already got beat by Finn Balor at SummerSlam a couple years ago, right? No, uh, yeah. Yeah, 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 no. As but, the Demon. But, I, yeah, it's just it's hard to fit, come up. I really wish they wouldn't have took the IC title off of Finn Balor. Well, what are you going to do? I mean, Bobby Lashley. Bobby Lashley Finn, technically deserved it because he never lost Bobby it. Lashley and Finn you know. Balor again. And no. It, by the way, what happened? I, I, thought, I thought you didn't do automatic rematches anymore. And like Bobby well, Bobby Lashley never lost the title, though. Oh. He, he, he actually mm. literally never got pinned. It was Leo Rush. It was Leo who, Rush who both times. Him. Yeah, so that, that... But Leo got him that title back, didn't he? Yeah. Good for, good for him. Uh, but, yeah, it, it's... These these WrestleMania storylines are, are are definitely in. There's, see, there's a lot still to it talk about. It seems like they're tying together, but there's still a lot to be yeah. left. But I tell you one thing, the promo of the week went to AJ Styles and Randy oh, Orton. Oh hell yes, oh, yeah. it did. A pretty good yeah. promo, yeah. And then, like when he pulled it out, what he said, uh, what is it? Rent. I'm the landlord, and rents do you, son of a bitch. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. was like, damn. I was like, Dude, let's go. But, oh, what was the other thing that he said? He said, you tell me none of your indie buddies haven't stolen anything? And he pointed yeah, out. Yeah, well, that was, that, I mean, the whole that's thing was sweet. good because AJ right. Styles had good points. He was uh, like, you would have never made it in my in my area, too. Yeah. Or when he said, talked about he, in 2005, he was getting a tan with Dixie Carter at TNA. Yeah, that was right. good. Yeah. No, it's just that whole thing was good because it was so realistic. And, and Randy Orton has so much more credibility. Uh, because he he's been in the WWE in like a, he's a thirteen time champion. Is that is that what it is? Thirteen time no, champion. I lost count. <laughs> what is it? AJ Styles? It took him like years and years, and he had to get established in another company. Randy Orton didn't need to get established. It, it is it's very interesting, and I'm excited to see that match because that is somewhat of a dream match for some people. Uh, a top guy in WWE versus a top indie guy. Uh, Honestly, top TNA's TNA guy. top guy. Yeah, yeah, you know? no, exactly. Top guy. They're and face. Randy Orton. Yeah. As, uh, to be honest, when Randy Orton. Uh, or excuse me, when AJ Styles was in TNA, you could argue that Randy Orton actually was the top guy in WWE too. So you're you're actually seeing this match. However many years later, ten years later, the two best guys from those from certain eras. Yeah, which is cool. You know, it's a WrestleMania worthy match, it's, just like Drew McIntyre yeah. and Roman Reigns. Those are WrestleMania worthy matches. But it kind of gives it away that Randy Orton's not beating Kofi then. Because they've already put on WWE's Instagram how it's AJ Styles and Randy Orton. They have already put the graphic up for WrestleMania. I saw that, yeah. And I was just like, okay, well, you just spoiled that one. So we, we well, know. Well, no, that it, doesn't. Why, why does it matter that Randy Orton can lose a match? He still has a match at WrestleMania. It doesn't make any sense. He, he can still. It, it hurts his credibility, but if he gets screwed by AJ Styles, it absolutely. He came out like. Oh, you're saying if he beats him? Yeah. Huh. Uh, well, if he beats him, he'd still have a match with AJ Styles. I don't know what you're. T- what are you saying? I'm saying it just kind of it takes away from because Randy Orton walked away. He never gave a full on answer. 
that he was going to accept the uh, match. That's true. He never gave a full-on answer. And then Vince announced him as one of the contenders to face Kofi Kingston uh, in a gauntlet match. So I'm assuming if Kofi doesn't win, whoever oh, wins I see. Yeah, literally will go to it... the WWE Championship match against Daniel Bryan. That's what I'm assuming. Oh, that's very interesting. They haven't left that door. They haven't really clarified those loose ends. But that's what I'm assuming. So why would you come out and say, oh, it's AJ Styles and Randy Orton automatically at WrestleMania unless... Unless they're they're planning to do some fluky finish can, or something. Can I can I think? I, I just thought of an idea for the, what the WWE Championship match possibly could be. Please don't say a triple threat. Th- I am going to say triple threat. Jesus. And it's going to be Eric Rowan and Daniel Bryan versus or er, er, in, in Kofi Kingston in triple threat match. Because I think Eric Rowan's going to win that last that last match. Kofi's going to get through four, and then Rowan's going to just beat the hell out of him probably and beat him, and the crowd will be so hyped because he would have beaten Randy Orton. Whether it didn't Samoa matter, and Joe. he would have beaten Samoa Joe. He would have beaten Sheamus. He would have beaten Cesaro. And then here's Eric Rowan, probably the worst guy. And, like, maybe the bar attacks him after the mat, after that fourth match. And Rowan wins. Rowan gets a title shot. And then Kofi somehow finds... That's the, they're well, good. Well, there let's, just, let's just see there how... There it is. Let's see what happens. Let's just see how banged yeah. up Kofi is after Samoa Joe. Because Samoa Joe, that's another guy you don't know, want to take lightly. No, yeah. Oh, then none of them are. Well, Samoa yeah. Joe will choke you out literally. Oh, but yeah. He'll kill you. I mean, I was kind of hoping Samoa. I was hoping Samoa Joe would face John Cena for the United States Championship. Still but could it happen. I mean, mm-hmm. it looks like John Cena is going to face Kurt Angle possibly. We don't know. Maybe John Cena can compete in two matches. <laughs> that's know? not no, 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 two no, minute that's match not. against Kurt Angle. Because let's be honest, John Cena against Kurt Angle in 2019 is a mismatch. It'll be. A, L- yeah, let's yeah, be ten, honest ten. here. But you need to have some short matches too. Yeah, thank God. I think yeah. with the U.S. title, I think they might go fatal four way like ladder match. With those four, all four of them to kind of deserve it. Deserve it at this oh, point. Oh yeah, uh, Rey Mysterio and Andrade. Going up against each other in like yeah, a ladder you can't, match here's type the thing, of scenario. Here's, if they keep setting great. up singles matches, you're going to have like 17 matches on the card. There has to be some added WrestleMania additions. WrestleMania 3 had 17 matches, but well, that's that, The matches era. back then were like six minutes long. Yeah, so That's a yeah. different They era. wanted to keep it short. Yeah, but so I, it's... It's going to be interesting. What were we talking about before this? I kind of... I, I mean... It, I, well, let's just... You know, final thoughts on... on Well, I, I mean, maybe we should maybe we should just take a break. Uh, do one of our segments and then come back to this okay. and talk about stuff we haven't talked about yet. All right. Maybe the maybe extend more on the Rousey, Becky Lynch, Charlotte feud, maybe Batista and Triple H. We can extend on that a little bit. Give me bit. what I want. Yeah. Yeah. Why don't you say that 17 more times, Batista, during your promo? I think right? he forgot his lines. I, yeah. I, I forgot. thought that he was going to uh, screw up bad on the mic, but he didn't. Now I was excited. Oh, no. Batista's always been He's really good on, on the mic. Yeah. And, and honestly, Batista can just shoot. If he forgets something, like he can just shoot on something. <laughs> yeah. Just give me what I want, Hunter. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see. Well, Why don't we do we... Eric's, Eric's Indy? Yeah, Eric's Indy yeah. Stabit. All right. So, Amanda Serrano, former WBC featherweight champion, WBA featherweight uh, champion, the first woman and Puerto Rican to win five, six, and seven weight classes, is challenging the queen of bare knuckle boxing, featherweight, and WBF Latin America champion, Rowdy B. Uh, Rawlings and they've been uh, she's been calling her out on Twitter and so uh, Rawlings she said uh, well take off your gloves and uh, you know let's let's get it on the uh, in the uh, in the ring so uh, we might have a potential fight um, you know soon for bare knuckle fighting championship be on the lookout for that Lance Storm joins as as a producer for Impact Wrestling which is very interesting so yes Lance Storm is now part of the creative team with uh, TNA. <laughs> Golden Boy Promotions, Ryan Garcia has been a, as a role as of late, and he'll be facing Jose Lopez March 30th at the Fantasy Springs Resort Casino in Palm Springs. And uh, AAA, uh, AAA will be having Triple Mania 27. Oh, no. Tickets are available now. As of late, we have Blue Demon Jr. taking on Dr. Wagner Jr. And more matches to be announced. And Triple Mania, please, don't botch. Don't yeah. have a rip. That's from the YouTube. biggest. That's the biggest storyline. With ads in between it. With Triple Mania, the biggest storyline there is just to not just f to up not, like just, you did last time. Just not to botch. You yeah, know? it's pretty bad. <laughs> Hurricane Rip. Oh yeah. Go we'll, listen to that. Episode. Was that what that episode? That's that was what it was. Yeah. Hurricane Rip. Yeah, we'll got pro- good memory. Hopefully, it doesn't get hur- Hurricane Rip too. <laughs> Um, okay, so Dream Match of the Day. I mean, nothing really much has happened during the indie segment, so Dream Match of the Day, I thought I'd throw in a uh, match from the MMA world. Jack Hager, I know he's going to be fighting soon, 
uh, around in the month of May. So I thought of a guy who I think maybe their styles might match with each other. Uh, Jake Hager taking on uh, the former UFC heavyweight champion, Stipe Miocic. Ooh. Mm-hmm. It's a good-ass match. That I is good. So. Uh, you guys any- I had a dream match I was thinking of in the car yesterday. Um, it was something that could definitely still happen, too. From the pro wrestling world, MMA world, boxing world. I got one. I think. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, let me. No, think I'm mine. gonna let you go. No, I don't know. So I need you. Well, to I, go. Was gonna, Dude, I was gonna. I was gonna lead into my segment. I was thinking me versus Priscilla Kelly at WrestleCon. Uh, <laughs> <sure>. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking. Explain to people uh, why you're saying. Ex- let's what, let's yeah. go. Let's go. Let's talk a little bit about Priscilla Kelly here. So Priscilla Kelly, I I don't know when this video popped up, but it popped up on my storyline. This morning, literally. I didn't have anything for Ryan Rance. I was just going to not do Ryan Rance today. But I saw her vomiting on Joy Ryan's penis. So I, I Are you going to do that for Ryan Rance? Yeah. So you want to do Ryan Rance right now? Let's just do go it ahead, real quick. Go ahead. Yeah, I, yeah, I'm going to keep it real just, quick, yeah, okay? Let's just jump it. In the words of Outkast in the, in the song Roses, okay? Crazy bitch. I don't know what in the world Priscilla <laughs> Kelly is doing continuously vomiting and doing stuff like vomiting, pulling out tampons, doing whatnot, and now all of a sudden she vomits on a grown man's penis. What in the hell is going on here? Like, has wrestling and the independence become so crazy and we're so desperate to get into WWE that we got to resort to vomiting on people's dick? In order to make sure that we get some credibility here. It, it just doesn't make any sense. Priscilla Kelly, I'm going to see you at WrestleCon. I'm going to make sure to get in your line. And I'm going to tell you why I think you're legitimately crazy. And why you have no shot to go to the WWE. You can't keep pulling these stunts. Nobody cares about your wrestling. Not a single person I know who's a wrestling fan has talked about Priscilla Kelly, the wrestler. We just know Priscilla Kelly, the chick who likes to have stuff come out of her mouth. Against grown man's penises. It's crazy. It's wild. It makes no sense, Priscilla Kelly. Please, please start focusing on your wrestling skills. Start focusing on actually being able to tell a story for a match instead of relying on crazy cheap stunts that aren't even cool anymore. I don't even care anymore about this, but I just had to bring attention to it because Priscilla Kelly is doing stuff like throwing up on on, on a grown man's penis. Like, we know Joey Ryan is. Joey Ryan has this whole gimmick with his penis. He's doing a penis party. By the way, I'm not going to any event. He's doing ever. a penis party? Yeah, he's he called is. a penis on, party. I'm not going to any event. It's supposed to have a lot of good wrestlers. I'm not going to any event where a grown man is actually having a, something called a penis party, okay? All right? I want to go to a vagina party, not a penis man, party. <laughs> like, I don't want to go to anything like that. So the <laughs> fact that a grown man would have something called a penis party and everybody's just going crazy, like, I got to get to this. Like, no. When I saw that, I was like, no, thank you. I'll do NXT TakeOver over a grown man having a penis party, even if it's a lot of good wrestlers there and we're having a good wrestling show. Priscilla Kelly, get your act together. I'm the RKJ man, and I'm always shooting my shot for greatness. Well, that's the one. That That's the most scandalous one he's done. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, it, you, you mentioned said the word penis 15 times. Well, she said... You said you wanted to go to a vagina party. I would much rather go to a, a, a party with a lot of beautiful women than a lot of dudes <laughs> at a party called a penis party. Yeah, that that's may, I mean, it's called a penis party, so we can't... It yeah. doesn't make that's any sense. That's what it's sense. called. So. And she is crazy. She is crazy for what she's doing. She's literally done this... Three but times. look at the reaction. You, you look. You're you're you're. You're still reacting to it. Yeah. Look at this. She still she's feeds so off that desperate. energy. But like nobody. She can feel the RKJ man's energy when she does these stunts. She's like, I'm gonna go further, but, but he's gonna yeah. go crazy. Oh yeah, she'll go. He's gonna start talking about if you guys parties saw, with yeah. dicks, all this stuff. She'll go even through the lengths of no man can even Look, imagine. <laughs> she's crazy. She's insane. She doesn't know what she's doing. She thinks that this is going to get her into the WWE when really everybody's just laughing at her and she's literally just a day meme and then we move on to the next thing because in our age, in the social media age, we forget about things for a day and then we'll pop up again and then we'll talk about it for a day or a week or a month and then we'll go on to our next thing. Like, That's all Priscilla Kelly's trying to do. She's trying to get herself trending in order to get to these big companies. AEW doesn't want to deal with something like that. WWE doesn't want to even deal with something like that, for sure, obviously. And I'm not even sure she can get into a place like Impact Wrestling. I'm not even sure. With a rampway that's only three feet. Well, maybe before. So it's like... Maybe before in the past, but right now, I don't think so. It doesn't... You've got legitimate wrestlers, female wrestlers like Tessa Blanchard. And these wrestlers are all coming out and saying how she's crazy. Like, Tessa Blanchard has said, like, I don't support what she's doing. 
Like, I just don't understand why she's got to go out there. Man, so Tessa does... is always in a pissy mood. I, I love I've, Tessa I've Blanchard, Tessa though. Late. Well, in her, her character <laughs> yeah, is a pissy. I've, if yeah. you've seen her in interviews, she's actually a sweetheart. Yeah, yeah. But, um, well, I like it, though. But, like, in my opinion, I, I think Priscilla Kelly is desperately trying to get on par as being one of the top female independent stars. That way she can get pegged by the WWE. She was in the Mae Young Classic. Yeah. I don't know. That's so, what's weird about so it. So it's, yeah. it's weird. It's like... You were already on the WWE's radar. And now you're getting. Now you're taking yourself off their radar, like as far away as you could possibly can, just because you're so desperate to get some attention. I don't know what her character is. Like we get, I can kind of accept it from Joey Ryan, because he's been doing this for years, and at some point it's become accepted. But I cannot accept it from Priscilla Kelly, who's already been in the WWE and already has had a taste of what the big stage, no offense to AEW right now, but until you start coming up with television products and, and stuff like that, you're still not there. WWE right now is the big stage. It's the number one company. She already has had that experience of being on that big stage. She's already had it. So I, I don't understand what she's what her mindset is. She's trying to, she's I guess she's trying to get people invested in these matches, but all we are, all we're doing is laughing at her and and, and and pointing to memes at her, and then after that, we're just moving on to the next next thing. We're looking at a Tessa Blanchard match. We're looking at a Taya match. We're looking at a Charlotte Flair, Becky Lynch, Ronda Rousey match. You know, we're talking about AEW and those sem- female superstars. We're not talking about Priscilla Kelly after a year. We're talking about her for literally twenty four hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's shock value. Oh yeah. You know, we're both, we're probably not talking about. Joey Ryan or other people like that more than 24 hours either. Yeah, I think Priscilla, Kelly, Ryan, Priscilla Kelly actually is probably getting more exposure because of this stuff than most indie wrestlers of her status. Mm-hmm. But but yeah, if you if you believe in the any publicity is good publicity, then this isn't a bad thing. But if you believe it like you do, then we need. To I be, think the WWE no more, keeps no seeing these videos. Parties. I think Triple H keeps seeing this, and he's like. Yeah, this is what I can't bring well, to Well, Triple H needs to deal with Batista first before yeah. he goes. Storyline-wise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No. Uh, all right, so... Uh, I'm That's here. not what we want, this, Priscilla Kelly. This is... Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the, uh, uh, we're just going to transition into Nick's random segment because this is a shorter podcast, and we do just need to have one more segment after this. So uh, this is going to be easy. Uh, it, it kind of involves wrestling, but not really. Uh, so Fastlane, we're going to close the book on Fastlane here. Uh, obviously, we did our predictions before the show, so I do have the results, and we have something that has never happened before. Jesus, we did a three-way tie, didn't we? No. Hmm. Okay. That's a good guess, though. Interesting. Three-way uh, tie. So, I was like... In third place, w- with some good scores, only two matches wrong, Okay, was the RKJ man. Uh, and in, first, in second place was me. It, it, it does not matter... That we got second, and third. Eric got every single prediction right. What? He, look, look at these two. He got every match right because they did change up some matches. So ones got deleted. He got the Andrade. Well, he Andrade Rey Mysterio was the only one that he had by himself mm-hmm. that we didn't. So, uh, Booyah. you 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 picked Becky. You picked Daniel Bryan, Oscar, The Shield. Boston Hug Connection, The Usos, and The Revival. Hell yeah. He picked all of those right. Damn. And extremely impressive. Well, think about For it. For someone ab- that hadn't won yet, either. Think he about, hadn't won. Think, think about, just blows us out. Think yeah. about it. If I would have <laughs> picked exactly <laughs> like him, I would have. we would have been tied. It would have been an exact tie. Well, it, obviously, because but you didn't. <sighs> I slither my way in there. Yeah, no, I, but we all did good. <laughs> I, I only got one match wrong. Um, oh, and by the way, dude, I know. Um, but it was Charlotte. Yeah. Over Becky. Le- I, I think I just did that, that to be crazy. devil's advocate too. Yeah. So I might. But it, 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 yeah. So we all did very well. But but uh, congratulations mm. to Eric Santos, Hell Easy yeah. E. Thank you for for correctly. Not he hadn't won a prediction segment yet, and then he just blows us out by going eight no. I'm just gonna celebrate later. Beats just Zion's us. <laughs> you want to come to the David Buster? He you just, get, he he go pop off? He, he just Zion <laughs> Williamson us. Uh, right now, mm-hmm. if you get that reference, oh to you. my goodness gracious! Let's get out of here so I can watch my boy. Exactly. Uh, okay, so let, let, let's move on. That's the end of Nick's writing segment. I just want to give the results. Uh, oh, you want to talk real quick about those kids or the college students getting screwed over by the rich parents thing? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like real quick, yeah, let's talk about. It. Let's, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Like real not? quick, real quick. Like I heard you guys talk about it yesterday. Dumbest, cover dumbest chick in the world, Olivia Jade. That mm-hmm. this dumbest. 
you, you, your mom pays five hundred thousand dollars in this video of you out there saying, "I just like football games and partying. I don't even care about school." Like, are you a <laughs> look? Like, here's what I'm gonna say Eric, about this. Eric. Well, let's uh, go. Yeah, uh, this you, is a neck a few bucks. Soccer soccer in the face. We, Bro, we got I... a neck a few bucks situation going. But look, here's here's the thing. Here's the thing. Okay. Kurt Angle versus Libby. Uh, <laughs> Brock Lesnar. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Ronda Rousey. That, 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 uh, that's actually believable. That's fair. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Look, the privilege is always going to do things to keep themselves on top. And when I heard this story, I wasn't surprised. Because the privilege always have that upper edge against people who don't have the necessary means in certain situations like going to college to fund themselves. So my biggest thing is this. If you are a person, you've got to put yourself in a position where if a college comes to you on some BS and say, oh, for whatever reason, it's going to cost you fifteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 to go to college, you're going to be like, that's okay. I got it. You know, and I, I feel like a lot of times people get in uproars about this and they get frustrated about this, but they don't pay attention to the fact that in their lives, they should be doing more to put themselves in positions to succeed. I've always said this. If you're unhappy about something in your life or you're unhappy about a position, maybe you're unhappy at your job, maybe you're unhappy with something in your school life or whatnot, whatever, your relationship, you don't have to stay in that situation. You can always fix it. And I believe you should fix it. And I believe these people, instead of getting in an uproar about these college kids getting into college because their rich mommies and daddies are paying for it, they should be going out there and putting themselves in a financial situation in order to be able to be like, oh, y'all on some BS? Because we know that colleges BS us all the time. We know this. I mean, you've got the ACC Network, for example, Nick. I'm watching the Duke game, and the ACC Network's being created. And yet some of these schools are saying, oh, we can't allow you in here. because, Or, oh, we can't fully pay for your tuition. You know, that's BS. Yeah, when you just on, created yeah. a $10 million network that you're going to gain billions of dollars off of. Don't BS us. These okay? schools are now under the radar. I so mean, they, yeah. If you're out there, okay, and you're upset about the situation, you should be. But what are you doing to improve it in your personal life? What are you doing to make sure your kids or yourself in general can be able to go to college? I was just talking to somebody where he said that his girlfriend is going to USC, and he's like, you know what? I saved up a lot. He saved up a lot of money in order to get his girlfriend to go to UFC. You know what I'm saying? Like. Put yourself in a better situation in order to succeed, too, because the privilege, that's what they did. They had an opportunity. They're in a situation where they can create uh, something of note where people can they can create something where they can get their kids into college. You got to be able to do the same thing, too. That's what I feel like. Well, what do you think the punishment is going to be for these kids? Expelled or their they are, degree the, just the, the two girls already are, are gone from USC. Well, they're dumb from from uh, Aunt mm-hmm. Becky. Oh yeah, Aunt Becky's Lori kids. Laughlin, yeah, uh, the, the the her kids are already gone. From they're the USC. Yeah. They're idiots. Uh, but look, but mind you guys, my parents did this for me. I wouldn't say shit. I, my my parents they go to jail. I'd be like in college still sitting there. <laughs> well, right? as a parent, like, your job is to make sure your children. If my parents thousand dollars, I'd be like, and I got in with my horrible grades. Like I'd be like. Let's go. You're, now I get to go uh, to USC. A parent, but what, a I parent, wouldn't make videos about it, though. A parent's job is to make sure that your child has a good future so you yeah. can have a better legacy, that they can have a better, better legacy than you, you know, than what you created. So... I don't know. I mean, people are getting up, up or in about it, and I know it, but it's a privilege being the privilege. If you're upset about it, do something. Go out there and make some more money. Yeah, I like yeah. that. I like that. Though. I like <laughs> hey, that like, hey, that's what me and my cousin were talking about during the Duke game. Like, create a situation. Yeah, just become Zion if you, mm-hmm. if you, if you want to be. Uh, all right, we Dunk need, on those mothers. Yeah, yeah we, <laughs> we do need to move on. Uh, let's just do this. What, what are we looking forward to uh, next week. We have about 10, 15 minutes just based on time-wise. Uh, yeah, Tom is crazy. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We yeah. don't have but, it. So we have about 10, 15 minutes, so let's just, uh, you know, one question. What are we most excited about coming up with these uh, these next shows, Raw and SmackDown? What are we excited about? What are we looking forward to mm-hmm. seeing maybe a storyline further, maybe a certain match be announced? What are we looking forward to? Let's they each go around the room, mm-hmm. just give something we're looking forward to. Mm-hmm. And if we all agree, then we'll talk can, about it. And can it be one thing or can it be multiple things? Well, you just, I don't, we can't go long on it. Yeah. All right, so, it's so just, you know. um, I'm very much interested in this AJ Styles, Randy Orton thing going on right now. Um, that promo got me excited and I know, yeah. and I saw them get kind of physical at that fast lane pay-per-view with AJ Styles having a really good argument. I had to get the jump on you first. 
which is a really good argument for a face like AJ Styles. I'm willing to see because back in January or in, in, in the later part of the year of last year, we saw the new AJ Styles, okay? So can he bring that new AJ Styles against the Viper Randy Orton? Can he have that killer mentality against Randy Orton? So I'm looking to see what they're going to do. Obviously, he's got to get involved in that Kofi Kingston match, but what are they going to do to make to amp the stakes between these two guys even further than just, hey, you were from the independents, I'm from the WWE, I've been here from years, and I'm a little more legitimate than you. I mean, that's kind of like the basis of the argument, and that's a good basis, but we need to have more of a foundation how, for that argument. How about argument. this? Based on their promos, loser leaves the brand. How about this? Loser Based on their the promos, hmm. loser leaves the WWE. If you have that could a, also if AJ Styles doesn't match? sign, if AJ Styles doesn't yeah. sign his deal, I quit the WWE match even if I don't want to. Um, <laughs> if AJ Styles signs a w, doesn't sign a WWE deal, and he's gone, Randy Orton, we've that, heard that. Yeah, we've heard yeah. both of them being linked to AEW. I mean, everybody's linked to AEW. I think that'd be hilarious if Randy shits on the Indies and then goes to, to the AEW. Indies. Yeah. <laughs> he loses. Time. I'm going to the Indies. Hypocritical Orton. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Hypocritical uh, BS Orton. Yeah. Instead uh, of the RKO, it's the I like PSO. That. I like that, though. Uh, I, I, myself, and am uh, excited to see how further this Becky Lynn, Charlotte, Ronda, because it's just it's gotten so real, and they haven't actually interacted uh, on the mic with each other since that YouTube video and since their tw- well, yeah, since their Twitter exchange uh, I, as well. They haven't actually had like a face. I, I really just want to see eventually a face off Becky and R- and Ronda. Just face off and just well, why? blow the roof off it with just, promo. It just, I just need to see something mm-hmm. where there's an all out. I need an all out blood. I need that road to WrestleMania beat down, beat down. I need I like it that all It's already happened though. Yeah, she did it last week on Raw. Oh yeah, last yeah, 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 yeah. That was. Yeah. The and road we'll probably to see more of it down. in the main. <laughs> yeah. it, it's a road I, to WrestleMania. I, just, I really hope. Is Becky Becky's doing a great job? If her knee actually isn't hurt, of making me think that her knee is actually hurt. I just want Becky just to go home for like three or four weeks and just be good. I want this WrestleMania match just to happen. Stop beating up Becky, man. Yeah. We're gonna like beat her. We're gonna beat her down to where she came She's wrestling like a the match. Dummy now. Like, come on. <laughs> yeah. You know. Definitely. So, uh, that, that's what I'm excited about that. That to further that storyline as well as to see what Triple H and Batista do because they can also hit the Triple H and his promos are always really good. So yeah. I'm excited about that. Too. I'm not necessarily excited about the match. Just. I don't know how guy two, raise the stakes, right? Raise two fifty year old men can really do in a match like this. It's, 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 a, a, it's, a, it's a viewer. Old, it's a viewer grab. But it's match. just it's yeah. just a viewer grab. So I I don't necess- I didn't say that I was oh, I said I was okay with the booking. I just necessarily the match necessarily I'm not sure about. But if they can find a way to get us more interested, other than Batista coming out with some. As Triple H called, what is it? The guards of the guardians of the Indies or whatnot. <laughs> if they could find a way to get us more invested in that, I mean, yeah, I mean, but there needs to be some blood. Yeah. I want blood. I feuds. I think it's also well. You remember Batista was actually the last guy to blade, I believe, legitimately. Yeah, I, I, so, yeah. I, I, without the, so, and he we got might fined see that for it. Yeah, you never know. And Triple H, Triple H, that was the first time I saw him kind of go. Uh, the last two weeks, he's kind of gone away from kayfabe a bit. Yeah, this which this, is cool. But WrestleMania, yeah. uh, I saw somebody said this kayfabe mania. Like it's 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 no kayfabe right now, I guess, because you know everybody's just shooting the real what everybody like us. Yeah, the uh, the IWC, the people who are the insiders of the wrestling yeah. business, are have been saying for the whole time. I mean, it's just tapping into what. You know, they're just tapping into that and they're putting it into storylines to make it seem more real. I don't have a problem with it. I just don't want to get oversaturated with that. But we are in the reality era. Yeah. yeah. Eric, okay. what's your what are you looking forward to next week? Um, I know for a fact that when it comes down to the match or the match between Batista and Triple H, I, I think that maybe Batista will probably try to test him or try to do something else to try to bother, you know, try to get in the way and try to, you know, build the storyline up. But the one that I'm really, really intrigued and I want to see on SmackDown is going to be Kofi, um, which I'm is glad the, gauntlet, you said that. the yeah. gauntlet match because I want to see what else can Kofi bring if he's really worthy to take on Daniel Bryan for WrestleMania, the W title. And so I want to see how, what, how, what kind of obstacles that they're going to throw into, you know, for Kofi Kingston. So that that I know for a fact that Kofi's going to wow us all, and so. But at the same time, the results, I'm a little bit shaky. I don't know what's going to happen. So, yes, that's I'm excited for that. Yeah, I mean, well, who, who's, who's Daniel Bryan going to defend the WWE Championship with? Like, like they, they, we don't know yet. We don't. Yeah. Three weeks away. 
It's the I was hoping John Cena, but until but when Kofi Kingston had that gauntlet, I literally don't know what they were thinking. I thought they would hope that gauntlet match would put maybe somebody they would find a spark from the crowd, and the spark came from Kofi. Surprisingly, yeah. they changed Mustafa, the name the whole show too. And Mustafa no. got his opportunity at Fastlane, so it was supposed to be Mustafa kind of in this role, sort of. But he got his opportunity. He hasn't been over with the crowd. As a matter of fact, they were booing him. Mustafa. Yeah, they were booing him at Fastlane. I think they but, were booing. They were booing him because he wasn't Kofi. Because he wasn't Kofi. Because they thought that oh, they man. thought they nobody knew. And, and, and but the match turned out to be great. Though. Oh, it was. And Mustafa Ali did deserve that match because he was taken down the elimination chain. Like he was supposed to have a WWE Championship match that wasn't a one on one match. So that it did make sense. And it's hard to argue if you're if you're a fan of wrestling why he was in that match. But nonetheless, I'm excited about that too because I just don't know what where's what what match is going to be right. Mm-hmm. That that storyline has not been the the foundation for it has not been set because there's no match yet so i agree yeah so i like it though i like that we said all those matches though because the, i see i feel like those are like i what? mean brock lesnar seth rollins brock lesnar is going to be on raw so that's exciting but i you know how much more can Don't brock lesnar add else. to yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. real but, quickly though yeah what do you think about oscar what do you think about ba- uh, bailey and sasha banks i was hoping they would face Team Besties, Trish Stratus, and Lita, but it looks like we're going to get a triple threat between Nia Jax and Tamita and Beth Phoenix and Natalia, which... Uh, uh, you, do you think that they're... You don't think that um, it's going to be Billy Kay and um, Peyton Royce? Maybe we'll just get a, a, a I think Nia Jax... I, I think the Nia Jax thing... I think it might a be Nia match. Jax... I, Hmm. A ladder match between the team ladder. But Nia Jackson and Tamina don't deserve. They they lost. Like they don't deserve. Yeah, another. but they kind of fit in the storyline right now because they're still because Bailey and Sasha Banks still attacked them backstage. I think what what I, what I hope happens is that we see like Nia Jax versus Beth Phoenix and Beth Phoenix goes over or something like that. Like like you you put because they, they, there's a reason Beth Phoenix is in the, is in the thing. She's not going to be a manager. She's either going to be in a tag team match or a singles match. So I think a tag team match would be the best opportunity. You don't want to do one on one. Yeah, she's especially been away with, from especially, the ring. especially with uh, I'm gonna knock you out, Nia Jax, too. or <sighs> I'm, I'm gonna botch and hurt. Dude, how many bot? I'll tell you, there wasn't many botches. Count. There wasn't many botches at Fastlane, but the but two were in the women's match. We're with Nia Jax. It goes to me. No, uh, Mandy Rose <laughs> botched too. Yeah. Oh my, oh. Mandy Rose. I too. thought Sonya Deville botched too with the whole looking under the ring thing. I don't know what happened there when she grabbed no, the no, thing. No, 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 because she was that. That was because she slipped. I don't know. And now I think their their relationship's kind of been fractured, and they might have like a. A thing, maybe in the future. Not WrestleMania, but maybe in the future. Not yeah. the thing that you guys are thinking about. That's what I was All about right. to Calm say. Calm down. I knew it. I could feel it. I could feel it coming over here. Well, the lesbian not vibes. Here, yeah. The lesbian vibes from RKJ. Were, were, were That's from I mean, she office, did get offended when EC3 came up to us. Bandy Rose in the pre in the kickoff. He well, came up no, there. No, hey, Sony Deville, Sony Deville is a lesbian. Yeah. I don't think Mandy Rose is. So, I'm. I don't see that storyline play out. This is in 2006. Come now. I don't see that storyline. No, I don't see it either, Eric. I, I'm glad I you agree with me. Mickey James and Trish Status? Yeah. Whew. Good memories. That is good memories. That was when I first started like really getting into wrestling, too. And mm-hmm. Edge had his sex celebration. And oh, everything. that was great. That was great. <laughs> you want to tell us the Lita, 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 Lita popped the story? boob out during that thing. The Eppos, yeah. Oh, you, uh, want me to tell you a story? Yeah. About uh, that? Tell us a story real fast. I'll tell you a story about that, that night. Uh, so... <laughs> I've You've, already heard this. What was that good. after uh, New Year's Revolution? Yeah. yeah. You so already told me about that. That was the night. I cashed in on Cena after the Elimination Chamber. And so I was watching Raw. So I, was, I didn't want to buy pay per views. So I watched, I watched Raw to find out what happened in the Elimination Chamber. And this guy, Edge, had won the title. I didn't really know who he was. And so then they're like, oh, he's gonna, there's a live sex celebration. And this is, you know, I'm a young, you know what I'm, sex a young was. I'm a young boy, man. Like, this is like the prime of me learning about stuff. And I'm like, I'm like, live sex. I'm like, like I'm let's, in. Let's go. Uh, let's go. I'm in. The problem was, it was going to happen in the 11 o'clock hour. And most of the times, the each, each hour, night, yeah. my mom would, would, would put me to sleep around like 10 o'clock. 10:15. And no you had way. a very late one. I no, have been at nine. No way I am getting uh, to this main event. But you know what I did? I made sure I saw that main event. Mm-hmm. I saw half of it. I, I saw. You get Rick, up to see. I saw Ric Flair come out and do his thing. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, a- I saw John Cena, F you, Lita. <laughs> I didn't see the boob or anything like that uh, while I was on live TV. But uh, I, I, my mom came in at about 10:30, literally right before the segment was going to start, and I was like. And so you had to watch it with the TV. And I remember TV my little TV, like, 
like the the normal volume number that you'd put on was like six or seven. And that was like a normal day, but at night it'd be at like four or three. You were at one. I was at one. Wow. They, you were at I, one. I was at Damn one. Near I closed my door, got put pillow put pillows in my bed <laughs> to make it seem like a person was in there, and sat and sat in the corner and watched it. Oh my god! Oh, it was god, the best dude. thing ever, bro. It was the best thing ever. Because I thought Lita was hot too. She yeah. still, she well, still, well, well, she's still hot. But I mean, the clothes she used to wear oh come God. out of the ring. Right, yeah, my goodness, it's funny too. I was just how watching, is there not more slippage? I was just watching the Hardy Boys thing and how how he cheated, like how apparently she cheated on him with uh, Edge and yeah, all that. Yeah. And Adam Cole, like, no, Matt, Matt, Matt Hardy did not cheat on Edge. Well, I'm he saying cheated on Lita, well, or yeah. Edge cheated. Well, no, Lita, Lita cheated. cheated on, yeah. <laughs> Lita cheated on Matt Hardy oh with God. Edge. Yeah, Edge uh, did not cheat on Matt Adam. Hardy. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently, apparently, I was so like wrong. the way he was making out of uh, Beth Phoenix. Uh, watch out the way he's saying, saying, yeah. the way he's making Edge seem like it. I was like, oh, we got a beta male bitch on our yeah. hands. But we know that story. That's a long. I mean, we yeah. did, it was clear. People still talk about that story to this day. It was it's one, one of, of the top wrestling stories. You know what? It's funny. It, it, you know, we talk about how kayfabe is dead now and how we use real life stuff to establish these storylines for WrestleMania. That kind of all started back with that Matt Hardy Edge storyline. Yeah, Lita. that's true. It kind of yeah. started back then because like they went at it and they were using each other's real names and real life things and real life scenarios. And Amy that was Dumas when the, and Adam Copeland. Yeah, when the crowd actually was getting behind Matt Hardy. That was, you could have put Matt Hardy in the title picture and nobody would have had an issue at that yeah, at true. that point. Yeah. And then Matt Hardy ended up getting sent to SmackDown. Crazy the yeah. uh, steel cage match they had. That too. was the best match, I think, of Matt Hardy's career. But oh yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. When yeah. he took that dive off of <sighs> Speaking of which, I know I know this is indie, but I watched Championship Wrestling from Hollywood, Eric, yeah. and I saw uh what is it? The uh the mass dude, the Happiness Express. Oh, I think the, I, I saw that match yeah. against Baines. And the dude like did a like a, a dive off the steel cage. Yeah. That was a great match. Yeah, really, they don't have any steel cage matches in Championship Wrestling from Hollywood. It's only like the fourth or fifth match or yeah, something. So. They rarely do it, which is which is fine. It's fantastic, so. man. So yeah. shout out to them down in Championship Wrestling for Hollywood, uh, man. That's championship. We're recording south of Championship Wrestling, so it's shout out to them whatever. up in Oxnard or whatever they wherever they record. It's, Where they record it's, Oxnard, right? Oxnard. It, I think it was Port. Oh, it's, that's Oxnard. Yeah. That's yeah. like the, yeah. it's not that yeah. far that's away Oxnard. from Malibu, so yeah, Ocean, yeah, yeah around there. Yeah. Ocean, yeah, Ocean View Pavilion. Yeah, hopefully we'll get down there one day. Shout but... out to Championship Wrestling Hollywood. Yeah, yeah, come to New York. We'll be there. Yep, I think right? they will. I think they will. They be should. Over there. Yeah, I think they should. But uh, they're not going to meet the ring generals. So. Yeah, mm -hmm. so that's their loss. Uh, let's let's end this thing. Yeah, let's thirty wrap, days let's of WrestleMania, y'all. Let's give them our social media. The Ring Journal's one on Twitter, right? Oh yeah, sorry, Lily, we're not done yet. Uh, <laughs> Eric, 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 give your uh, Eric, give your social media and your, all okay. your stuff. So, Slime and Saturday on OC Rock Radio. Check me out. Um, I'm gonna be doing in some good stuff. So, uh, oh Come yeah, on. I'm probably gonna be doing a, a little bit of the results of what happened between Dos Santos and the Black Beast. So, yeah. be on the lookout for that. And gonna announce some more MMA matches in the future. Video Game Cafe on Twitch and YouTube. Check it out. I have yet to post anything, but I'll be back into it. Also for um, what else is in the? Yeah, for Instagram underscore Santos underscore nine. Uh, check me out. All I do is just post memes and just hit the bag. And also we <laughs> throw in a lot of good stuff as well. You know, for Facebook, Eric Santos. He didn't, he didn't even put himself over on, on Instagram. He's just like all I do is just post random pictures and I go to the gym. That's, that's it. All, that's all I do. Uh, all right, my social media is at Nick Nenad, lowercase, all the letters on everything. Uh, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. If Instagram and Facebook want to work, um, yeah, I was freaking out the other day. Snapchat, uh, Nick underscore Ninad. Uh, I do the Cover Two podcast every Wednesdays at uh, at nine o'clock. Uh, there's the RKJ is Man's phone that is not part of my social media. Nope. I am not promoting his phone. Nope. Uh, but you ladies can get my number. Yeah, just absolutely. DM me. I just absolutely. turned down the volume for that. Yeah, yeah. 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 editing. Uh, Thank you, sir. Yeah, but. Uh, and then, do I do anything else? Oh, yeah, I did want to mm. mention two, uh, two other things. Um, Mickey Garcia, or excuse me, Mikey Garcia versus Errol Spence Jr., big boxing match happening at AT&T Stadium. Yeah, the I saw that. Uh, both guys are undefeated. So, okay. might be a, if you can watch the fight, watch it. It hasn't been promoted very highly, which is why we're not talking about it. And then also, t uh, Darren Till versus Jorge Masvidal. Uh, that fight is at like one o'clock tomorrow afternoon. Yeah, you have, is that the ESPN Plus one, yeah, yeah. the UFC one? And uh, so that fight, the winner of that fight, more than likely will face Ben Askren. Mm. 
Mm. Okay, okay. So look no, at so if you I'm wanted those are two fights, if you take an hour out of your day or half an hour out of your day, mm. um, and can stream it or something like that for free, or if you're rich enough just to pay for all those things, that's it's five dollars. Yeah, fine with me. If you're, if you're Lori Laughlin, you want to pay for all of them and you have enough money and you can pay you can, you pay can your bribe his way in college, then that's fine. Yeah, yeah. But uh, that's my that's all that's all my stuff. So RKJ man uh, at the RKJ man. Uh, Instagram, uh, RKJ Man on Instagram, the RKJ Man on Twitter, uh, the RKJ Man on Facebook, and Ring Generals. What Ring Generals one on Twitter? Yep. Instagram, the Ring Generals, uh, um, and then Facebook, the Ring Generals. So we're gonna put our links and stuff in our description yes. to the mm -hmm. social media. So hit that subscription or hit that subscribe button, tap the bell for notifications and all that good stuff. Our yeah. thirty days for WrestleMania continues. Oh. Um, I, was, I actually want to add in Fred Durst. Shout out to Fred Durst. Oh, yeah, Steve Carino. Yeah, yeah. King of Old School Durst. Steve Carino. And, and Steve Carino. Yeah, King of Old School Steve Carino and Fred Durst. Shout out to you guys. Yeah, that was dope. That, yeah. was, that was that was dope. that's why you need to follow the ring journals on social media because you never know who may comment, yeah. who may show up, yeah. what could happen. That's why you got to follow us, man. You ready? Fred, to Fred, Fred Durst. Uh, he was. It was my, my way, right? That was their. Mm -hmm. uh, Limp Bizkit, the lead singer of Limp Bizkit. Yeah. yeah. So that's we've know, been doing a lot of Limp Bizkit one stuff. Of the best. Well, yeah. Limp Bizkit was dope. Yeah. I, unfortunately, they're not together anymore, or they'd still be. They dope. still. They're still together, but they're not. They, they're yeah, not really. It's relevant. like my cousin's band. My cousin's band. Yeah, they're still together, but like they haven't put out music for like twelve years. Yeah. So, RKJ hey. man, finished though. Hey man. Hey, wherever you're at, man. Whatever you're doing. Raise a glass in the sky and salute the rain generous.